All right, well, I'll call this meeting to order. Welcome everybody. Everybody look great in their costumes on uh, Thursday. A little adjustments here and there, but it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It, it was a lot of fun. I thought everybody looked pretty good as standard pirates. You saw my email about cranking it up another cranking level. Cranking it up, yeah, yeah, do something outrageous. <laughs> it's just like, mm. <laughs> it was cool. And the guys were getting into it, which is really, very really cool. I'm still trying to figure out if the porch pirate idea would actually land. I'm not sure whether it's too. We were to to John, we were talking about that yesterday. Uh, John Wanless and Mark and uh, Bles and I, and there's a way to do it for sure. Got to have a couple of packages. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, let's get started with uh, the minutes um, for last month. Everybody have a chance to read uh, Paul's excellent minutes. Yes. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to accept? Move to accept. Second. Sure, I'll second that. All right. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next would be the treasurer's report. And um, I, I took a brief look at it. Uh, everybody get a chance to check. Basically, uh, where uh, total income so far this year is uh, $4,266. Expenses so far, uh, 13,390 for the year. Any questions on the, those I mean, numbers? So this is, is this making assumptions about the show profit or is it just talking about what oh that's just so far. the actual that's just the actual just so the far actual. The, the budget for uh for this year is thirteen thousand eight hundred and fifty. yeah that's, uh, that's what we're yeah, yeah. right so we're hoping to generate so yeah um, I don't think there's a whole heck of a lot to say here. I think that uh, uh, dues are coming along. It looks like it, it's it's interesting that we budgeted 2,400 in dues and we've got 1,400 in. And it's like, does that mean in the last three months of the year, we're going to get a lot of dues coming in? Because it's like, I, I don't know where we came up with the 14 or with the 2400 just looking in previous years the actuals we haven't had a something that high in the since i mean ever it, that's listed so i don't know where we came up with that number but yeah, yeah i'll have to ask uh, i'll ask dave so these are dues that come in from bhs to the chapter yes yeah so everybody when they get the renewal you should see the dues show up. And do we know what the amount is per member? Because I mean, that would tell us how we got the 2,400. Um, it's not very, it's not yes, yes and yes and no, because certain members that have been, when you've been for X period of years, then there's automatically gets, you know, reduced and stuff like that. So, mm. uh, so. okay. Uh, so then our uh, our balance right now is twelve thousand seven hundred seventeen in the bank. So it would be great to have it higher, but that should be okay for now. Right. Okay. Um, any other questions on finance? Oh, we're going we're gonna to do a uh, segment on show budget today, right? Yes. Okay, cool. I, I can ask my questions for that. 
it does seem like we've been consistently overestimating revenues and underestimating expenses. Yes. Yes, that's true. And I, I don't like the trend is not good. All right. So the, the trend is, says that we, you know, we, we have to get more revenue or reduce some of the expenses. Otherwise, we'll be out of out of money in two years. Well, right. we've, we've talked about does it do we want to um, ask for some additional assistance from the members, you know? So something I everybody put in a hundred bucks or something like that, and uh, but we haven't uh, we haven't asked that yet, but we have haven't asked passed. for that, right? We've done it in past years. Yeah. If we're talking if we're talking about juice and revenue, I think I think what we should be doing is putting like expectations on the members on how many tickets they're selling to the show, um, and and use that as the as the primer. Because I know it's it's like pretty pretty big morale hit to put to put so much effort into the show and then have you know seventy people in the in the audience. So I feel like if if we're talking like we should laser in on let's let's get the show revenue on target, um, and that's got to be driven by uh, by by member sales right now because we don't right. we don't have any other channel for ticket sales. We have True. we have no we have we have no plans to expand into like nursing homes to increase revenue on that front. So it's all about just ticket sales, ticket sales, ticket sales. True. Right. True. Are we going to stream the show too, or how? No. Right, Larry. We're not streaming this show. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That we are not streaming this show. Because what? It's too difficult? Or? Too expensive. expensive. Too expensive to bring in a production crew. Um, and, to, and, and to Mike's comment about ticket sales, um, I don't believe that Mark has fired up a MailChimp account or MailChimp campaign, uh, which reaches out to a lot of our friends of the Peninsulaires. Um, and he's not here. I was going to ask him about it. Um, I have some information on that. Yeah, what do you got? I uh, reached out to Mark yesterday saying, look, I know you're going to be in Vegas this weekend. If you've got a copy of the flyer, the PDF, get it to me. I can get the uh, MailChimp thing out this weekend, and then you can follow up with the next one. So I'll get something out later today to our friends of the Peninsulaires pushing the show. And then once he gets back, I want to get, and we can use some of the pictures that we took. And maybe if we, on Saturday, maybe the lighting will be really good and we get some good pictures uh, of the chorus, right, in, in with the ship. And uh, <clears throat> we can use those in, you know, subsequent um, messages out. But the first one will go out today. Okay, so you're going to get the MailChimp out today? Yes. Okay, then I'll leave it alone. Oh, yeah. yeah, let's get sorry. This is all show stuff, but like, let's get let's get real crisp. Like, we have to assume that we're only going to get maybe fifty ticket sales from from Mailchimp. Like, we have not had like like I I don't think like we can rely on Mailchimp as like it's a necessary channel, but it, I, I don't think it gets anywhere near what we need to need to object to to complete the uh, um you know like for show revenue. No, not at all. I yeah. mean, it's it's a, it's a it's just an additional channel. Uh, we do generate sales from it. Um, this is probably one of the only ways that some of these folks out there hear from us is via that that mailing list in Mailchimp. Um, do we have, do we have any idea of how many tickets we sell from from the Mailchimp pushes? I, I'm sure there's a there's a, an accounting somewhere, but I don't have a. I don't have access to that. Um, it, 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 all, all since ninety percent of tickets that are sold are processed through the online system uh, on our website, and both the Mailchimp uh, activity and the individual member promotion to their um, their da their databases goes through that mechanism. It's I, we don't really have a way of capturing that 
information, the data. I don't think there's a tag set up in the email that goes out from MailChimp to indicate whether when they click the link to go to buy a ticket, where did it come from? I, I don't, that, that isn't set up. So the short answer to your question, Mike, is no. Yeah, I mean, like, like way I'm thinking about it is like we sold 70 tickets to the June show. Um, it's not that hard to, to look at a list of like on, on the MailChimp emails and the, um, and the, the ticket emails and, and to true up against that. Right. Right. But, but I mean, like there's your upper bound, right. At most MailChimp sold 70 tickets. Okay, well, why don't we, uh, if you want to address that again, why don't we move ahead, though, with the other reports? Uh, Sorry, uh, one thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do we have any sort of physical media that people can hand out to friends with a QR code or something? Are we relying purely on digital communication to get people to come to the show? I know that I would, I mean, I use digital, but I would also walk around the neighborhood and actually give physical things to, to neighbors. Well, I think that was also part of Mark's plan was to get something out to the, to the members that we could share, whether print at home and, and hand out or forward to your list. Um, but he's, he's tied up with, with business yeah. in Vegas. So I don't know when that's going to happen. But I, I I think it's important because I think for a lot of the members, um, you know, they they still think back to the physical tickets. And I think having something to give to someone uh, could be helpful. Yeah, you do too. Okay, so is there an action item there? For, uh, no, Mark? no, it's, it's, it's just a process. And um, we just got to make sure that, that, that Mark is getting the support he needs. And, uh, you know, I'll work with him. Dave's working with him. We'll, we'll get something out. Um, I don't know. I know we're trying to shelve this thing, but I don't know if, if we decided to, to go with physical tickets or not. I don't think it matters, except, um, in my opinion, handing 10 tickets to a member at rehearsal kind of raises the expectation of sell these tickets. Yeah. Yeah. So so these are, not and I'm not talking about tickets, I'm talking about something that looks like a ticket or a flyer with a QR code. That's all or, supposed to be coming. It just hasn't, we haven't gotten it yet. Okay. All right, let's, let's move on. All right, thanks. Um, all right, so Larry, you're up next, technology. Uh, nothing new to report, still uh, doing some research on potential for live streaming down the road. I'm in no rush to do this right now i'm fortunately guys i'm uh, i'm in contest mode um my my mode will change after after next weekend um to show and other types of goodies um zoom we're we're, we're seeing th you know roughly three guys every week um i don't think that the engagement of zoom is anything like we had hoped it was um it's um, it's kind of, it's it's to me it's just kind of fading away. Um, other than the occasional guy that can't make it to rehearsal for some reason or another, um, it's generally the same guys and they're just not engaging in in the physical chorus. So I I continue to question whether we should even be bothering with Zoom except for special occasions. Um, Can we ask Harry, who's one of the people who? frequently attends by Zoom, what his experience is. And... Yeah, and just recently why I've been on Zoom is that I won't be able to go to the show. And I know that there's a lot of focus on preparing for the show, or for the convention, I should say, and the show. So I've been just lately uh, on Zoom for that reason, but normally I would go in person. But do you find it, do you find it valuable? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, just to be uh, aware of what's uh, going on and, and what, what people are doing, but it's not um, affecting me personally that much since I'm not going to be at the convention. So um, I can get as much out of what I want from, from Zoom just temporarily for that reason. 
but I, you know, once we get past the um, uh, show and the convention and the show, because I'll miss that too, because I'll be traveling, uh, I'll be back in person almost all the time. <laughs> I do think there's value in it. I mean, like when I was in Ohio, like without that, without that experience, I would have been completely out of it, right? Um, so I think there is value in it. I think we should keep doing it. I like the reality of it is that if you want more attendance on it, you got to push it from an attendance perspective, right? Um, I, I'm curious, to, like I, I, I sort of want to fast forward to to Elliot's. Um, report because like, I feel like generally speaking, our attendance is down kind of across the board. So, um, but yeah, I think, I think we should continue doing it. I think there is a valuable service though. All right, we'll see what, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do about generating more interest and, and actual attendance on Zoom uh, to keep it valuable for not just members that can't make it, but my time um because it is another you know it's another aspect of all the time i spend i've been getting to i've been getting to the elks at five o'clock for the last six, six weeks um i'm fried by the time i the day is over i'm doing a lot yes i do have some helpers um so it is helping a little bit but i'm, I'm getting a little fried on it and just wondering you know what's the value of this for two or three guys that okay um there was another i had another thought and it'll come back to me. So that's all I've got for now, unless you guys have any other questions. Thanks, Larry. Uh, moving on, um, Elliot, marketing. Yeah, so- um, Or development, I, pardon me, development. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, basically I've, sorry, first of all, for sending out the report last minute, but um, I'll just kind of go through it quickly. Um, I've also been uh, disappointed with the attendance. Um, we've been averaging around 35, 36 uh, people per week. Uh, actually, there's a math error there. It should be 4.2 on Zoom. And I just checked the numbers again. That is that is the average. So we're getting around, you know, between three and five people uh, typically. Um, Elliot, I have a question when you about your your average of thirty five to thirty six people. That's from September eighth through October sixth. I don't happen to have your earlier reports. What was it before? I mean, you mentioned a little bit later. It's down from forty two. So, what had we been hovering in that forty forty plus? for multiple months or was yeah. that an anomaly? I, th I think I need to start um, a publishing or at least keeping um, uh, something. But one one thing I can do here, let me, let me uh, share my screen. Oh, uh, I can't share unless- Yeah, I... there you go. All right. So this is this is the Google Doc I use to track people, and I track the Zoom attendance. And so, if we look at the numbers here, um, these are the totals, and and you can see what the breakdown is of live and Zoom attendees. So, so it, when when you count these people. Do you count guests as well as members in attendance? I do. Um, I do. And uh, right now, the totals aren't uh, separating out who the get, you know, what number is coming from guests or from uh, candidates or members. Because as you were just scrolling along, every so often there's a blip of 40 some, 41, 42. And I'm just wondering if those were days when we had uh, Chris there or 
we had Cindy uh, on Zoom or something like that, because most of them are hovering in that 30 to 35 range. Well, you know, do you want to look at the 40 or I know in June, I mean, look at this one here. This oh, was, yeah, this was our first um, uh, vocal clinic when we had those uh, extra people showing up. Right. Um, I mean, you know, we can we can zero in, you know, here's a 42. If we look at that, first of all, um, I don't count Chris. So I, I mark the attendance, but I mark it with a zero. I, I guess my my question is really going back to something Mike Kading was saying in terms of the the sense that we are uh, our our attendance numbers are dwindling down and I'm I'm wondering I mean is is that exactly what we're seeing or is it just one of these things where it bounces up and down every week and there's an average that is pretty consistent yeah let me let me clarify like the question I'm asking as well so we heard in like June July like oh all these guys are like on vacation and stuff like that and they'll all be coming back September October and now I'm looking around like um, Wilson hasn't been there the last couple of weeks. Eric Kong hasn't been there the last couple of weeks. Um, I'm not sure if Liam's on or off. Like, like, well, I, we, yeah, yeah. So, so without the, without the specific, um, and, and focusing on the general, like we were 40 plus in June, July, and now we're at 35, 36. Are we actually seeing a decline in attendance when we're supposed to be seeing, like, this is supposed to be our, our strong, um, you know, kind of, kind of, like all all hands on deck. Period. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I only see one week in July that hit forty, according to his his thing. I don't. And move back to June, if you wouldn't mind. June had didn't have anything in June that hit forty. Well, wait. No, not June, the first week of June hit 41. So I don't know. That's a good question, Mike. Um, I, I do know. I mean, there are there are a number of people who who have been absent. You know, Dave Morley, for example, uh, Blaz has not been attending quite regularly. I'm not I'm not sure what his reason is, but. Um, those are two that uh, come to mind. I know Wilson is on the East Coast. Yeah, Wilson's um, traveling. He really regrets. He wanted to become a member and participate in the show, but um, he can't. Yeah, he will I mean, audition I, I, I think, as soon as he gets back. I mean, I, th I think I think we need to laser because because I, I keep hearing the same names of folks that haven't been around for months, right? <laughs> like like. Uh, um, Dave Morley, I, I don't know if he's on the call. I, I love him to death, but like I can't think of him as an active course member right now. He, he was um, on. A, he was gone. He knew. We knew he was going to be gone for nine weeks. Right. Right. So, um, you know, it, it's uh, like you know, based on how many guys on the risers, candidates and members. So, I think it is very important for us to break down: is it a guest blip or is it candidates and members? Um, but like, I, I don't. I don't have a sense of how much how big our course is right now. Right. Um, like I, I feel like we're in a 33 ish, uh, chorus size. Cause we got some, we got a couple of guests floating around too, right? Well, I have that other metric I've been using, which, um, you know, is looking at attendance, the last eight sessions, people who attend at least half of them. And, um, that's at 38 and that would include, it does include uh, new guests who've attended at least half of the sessions since they first came. So I don't know how valuable um, a metric that is. It is down. I mean, it was a, it was a, a, at 42 at one point earlier on, and now it's at 38. Actually, it was 42 last month. Yeah, and Ellen, maybe you can maybe you can educate us just a little bit on like. Are, are you getting, like, like if, if somebody is falling off the radar, what are you doing in terms of, like, reaching out to them? Like, what, what, what's your process for uh, either 
um, encouraging them back or um, or getting information on what's going on with them? Um, so w w when it comes to uh, guests and even, I mean, one issue is getting people to fill out all their information when they become candidates and even members. I've, I've had some complaints from um, uh, from Chuck that he, you know, he, he doesn't know when people's birthdays are because they aren't putting in their birth date. I've sent a couple of emails asking people to, um, I, I could do it during uh, one of the business meetings. Um, by the way, is my screen still up there? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Huh. It's weird. It's not showing a sh sharing, but anyway. Um, yeah. So, um, what, what, what I do is in most cases, um, it's really been email. And if a guest dropped off, like I did a campaign this past week, I reached out to a whole bunch of people who looked uh, promising, um, you know, who, who had either attended recently or um, were attending uh, a while ago and, and asked them, you know, what's going on? Are you, you know, is everything okay? Are you still... Are you still interested? Are we going to see you back? And I only heard back from one, which who was Harsha, who's uh, currently in India, and um, he's he's still really enthusiastic and and says he wants to become a member. Um, he's he's returning in a few weeks, um, so and actually he's not even a candidate yet. So you know we're going to need to move him through that process. So Elliot, I have a question about that. Um, yeah. The individuals who you're talking about, can you give me some sense of which generational bucket they fit into? And I'll tell you the reason I asked that question. Because if you're anything past um, the boomers or the next one after that, the Gen X people, they're not reading their emails. They don't use email as much. It's, it's instant message is the thing. So for the millennials and anything newer than that, if you're not sending them a text message or an IM, I mean, Mike Kading is a great example because I send Mike Kading emails and I, and I hardly hear from them. But when I send them a text message, I get a response. So, so maybe, maybe the medium of communication is not reaching the individual in the manner that you had hoped. Uh, I, I think that is a very good point. And I think something I need to do is get a little stricter about guests providing me with their phone numbers. Right now, the phone number field is there. Uh, most people leave it blank. Uh, I always require an email because otherwise I can't even get them on the virtual guest book. Right, right. Maybe I need to insist on a phone number. Cool, okay. Hey, Mike. Um... Mike, see, just a, 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 and for everybody else, just a quick thing. And, and maybe, uh, Elliot, you have something on this as well. Because um, part of part of this from the director's standpoint is um, we have uh, performances coming up and trying to figure out what chorus we have at the performances and such. Um, and for uh, Fresno right now, we've got 29 uh, members marked will attend on, um, on Groupanizer. Um, I don't... Uh, don't remember exactly how many we had in Stockton, but we had 24 marked will attend in Stockton. So I don't know, Elliot, if you have the actual numbers for Stockton or not. Uh, no, I I mean, I'd probably need to go back to the photo. <laughs> you mean actual yeah. numbers? It's a count, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I have not actively tracked attendance at shows and maybe i need to add that to the spreadsheet yeah but, i mean it, it, it's going to be 25 to 30 um somewhere in there for for stockton yeah um, that's right which is which is effectively a net zero performance increase between between um stockton and fresno mm -hmm. uh, so like we'll, we'll see we'll see where we end up and and recognizing that there are different performances the more interesting one is let's compare Stockton and the show, November 5th show. 
Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, the, the point being, like, we want to be growing the forest, and um, certainly we don't want to be l losing members from a, from a perspective, so. We were 26 in Stockton. Total on stage. Yeah, sounds right. You just, just count that, Larry, on the picture? Yeah, it's on the web, our website. Okay. Uh, anything else? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Um, so uh, looking at, um, so I, I took down a, a number of action items there. Um, in terms of, uh, <clears throat> so we have some new candidates, uh, Randy and uh, Bruce actually became a candidate the first, the first time he attended. Um, and uh, so we have our new member, Skip. And in terms of upcoming members, Liam passed his audition last week. Now, the thing about Liam, I've discussed this with, with Mike, I've discussed it with Liam, is he can only attend every second week. And he's been fairly consistent about that. Um, he's willing to do the work to keep up. I don't know if we've really put that to the test yet, but when we, when he did his audition, part of, part of the conversation was if you are interested in participating in the convention, and I, you know, I discussed this with Mike, um, you know, we can fast track you. And in the end, he he decided, um, you know, he wanted to go ahead with the audition, but after passing it, we had that conversation, and he said, um, I, you know, I just don't want to risk, uh, you know, bringing things down. So he didn't feel completely comfortable with the convention. I think he'll he'll be up for the show. So. I, I don't know what the process is anymore, to be honest. It used to be three weeks as a candidate before the board, you know, now we're, we're making someone um, a candidate the first day they show up and, you know, letting them take okay, it hold on. on. Hold, on a, hold on a second. Ellie. So we've got to, like, if you're, if you're talking about Bruce, um, he's a, he's a former masters of harmony guy, right? He's been singing barbershop for 20 years. So yes. like, like that's that's a rare condition and a rare example. The process remains three weeks as a guest. We have the conversation about candidate. We we audition them at the right time in terms of like once we once we're comfortable that they're showing up on a regular basis and they're committed and they have the right work ethic and the right culture. Um, nothing's changed on this. This is just the the Bruce was a particularly uh, rare exception in. Like he's a better he's a better barber shopper than about half our guys. No, no, so, I, well, I'm not I'm not okay. questioning Bruce at all. I, I was thinking more in terms of Liam because by the old process, uh, since Liam Liam only auditioned one week ago, I wouldn't be bringing him up for uh, a vote today. Now, if if he had decided he wanted to participate in the competition, and we were okay with that we'd have had no choice but to fast track it. Um, we could still have that vote today and I would vote yes, but I'm just saying uh, it used to be three weeks as- As a candidate. As the audition, I think. Or I thought, maybe-, maybe I, thought, I, I thought the audition was after they'd been around for three weeks as a candidate and we felt that, it, that they fit in and then the auditions, if he passes the audition, then it goes to a board vote. That's what I thought the process was. Do I have that wrong? You know what? I, let's just do what makes sense because I'm not sure what it is. And what you just said, Dave, makes sense to me. John? Yeah, I mean, I mean what, we're, what yeah. we've been running into is that we've got four weeks for a chance to get a board vote and every week we can audit it. So we're auditioning ahead of board votes because like to keep the energy and the enthusiasm. Yes, um, that's that's all that's going on. Um, like for you, sorry, go ahead. Go yeah. So so the rationale behind the three weeks was to to um, to eliminate some of the chances that we had, you know, with with the guy riding around in his in his speedo. All right, was to take a look at at somebody's um, you know character and the if we wanted them to be a peninsulaire. 
I don't think that it had anything to do with their talent or their ability to sing barbershop or anything like that. So I think that, you know, that the um, that having some of the uh, members who are already um, oh, Mike, everyone wants a speedo story. And anyway, I'll, I'll tell you that. That's a long story. Um, anyway, so so I think that the the idea, you know, with former barbershoppers or former members of the Peninsulares in terms of, you know, candidacy and stuff like that really has no meaning. I mean, I think that Max Lan Frank. Franconi and Alan Takahashi, we know what they're like. I mean, we do. And, and, you know, and I think that that three week thing was, was meant to, if we don't know them to make sure that we don't, that we have, um, we're comfortable with them. I mean, I think that the, the Glenn thing, you know, is a, is an indication of we're just not comfortable with him as a person yet. And um, I think that that's the rationale behind it. So, so applying these 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 rules and, and regulations, well, they're really good, you know, in the in the the rules and regulation thing. I think that there are certain circumstances where, um, you know, we feel comfortable with the person, and I have no problem, you know, fast tracking them or changing the changing the situation at all. I okay, that, that makes total sense to me, and. So I think the way we should do this is we should only audition people that we are comfortable being members of the chorus. What, you know, whatever that takes. If it's someone brand new, then yeah, we want to observe them for a while. We want, you know, for, like in both aspects, right? right? So before we agree to an audition, we should have some sort of internal process maybe it just involves uh the section you know the directors and and the section head um you know decides uh yeah i think this person's fitting in or does it take a, a bigger discussion but the point is you know whether it's the day before the board meeting or three weeks before we're auditioning someone that we're that we we think we're ready to vote in and the vote is a formality does that make sense? Yeah, I think but so. Then how do we, so then how do we make the decision? Uh, how do we suggest to someone, hey, you know, we think you're ready to. So it, I, think, I think it's pretty simple. Um, if someone has come into one of our, um, as a guest who has never been a barber shopper before, maybe has some singing experience, maybe not. Um, he comes and it, it, the three week thing does two things for us. One, it shows, is, he, is this person consistent? Are they coming on every Thursday night? If they come once and you don't see them again, or they come once and they don't come for another five weeks, okay, that tells us something. Um, and then uh, if they're on the risers with in their section and they're not able to pick up anything or they're disruptive, that tells us something. Uh, if they're just fitting right in, that tells us something. And then we can say, okay, great. They verily, hey, we're excited to see. You. What do you think? Are you happy? Do you want to participate? You want to become a member? Here's the process. Um, then they're a candidate, which means that then they have to do their audition thing and away they go. Yeah. But uh, if they're somebody that's transferred here from another geography, that's a barber shopper anyway, we've had a number of those people. It's like, hey, great, come and join us. Now, it doesn't hurt us to have that person be here a week or two because there are sometimes personality conflicts even within the society, its members, that make it n not conducive to um, uh, the forward progress of, of, of that particular chapter. But that's a rare occurrence, but it doesn't hurt us to wait a week or two uh, when somebody comes in just so that we can figure out who's the who. All, all of that makes sense. But what I need is like, I'm the one that nags these people, hey, you're gonna audition, you know, that tells them about the process. And so what I would like is at least some internal, um, you know, I can speak with the with the section lead. Okay, yeah, is, he really, is he really uh, cutting it? 
do you think he'd be ready to audition? I speak to someone else, I'm not sure who, maybe it's the section lead, is he fitting in? Are there any conflicts? Do you yeah. think, you know, so, some kind of checklist. That's the right thing to do. I mean, I've come to you a couple of times with Randy. I said, hey, is Randy auditioning? Because he, he coordinates that through you. And, uh, um, but you, it perfectly reasonable, you know, even within the first couple of weeks, a guy comes in and, and we assign him a buddy. We have, and it, sometimes it's the section lead. Sometimes if there's more than one person, then the section leader has another person kind of helping out and you see who they are breaks hey how's how's fred doing what do you think of fred that, that's that's absolutely appropriate elliot all right yeah, so, is a so, conversation between me and the section lead enough to uh for me to decide okay let's do that audition get get the uh i mean like the answer is yes but like one of the directors we'll have a ton of input on that as well. Exactly, because they, they see things and hear things from where they are that we can't. All right, section lead and one of the directors, uh, I will have a conversation with before suggesting that someone, uh, that someone uh, auditions. Yeah. And the other, the other guidelines, yeah, I don't need, I don't need hard numbers. I think it's all uh, common sense and yeah. Yeah. No, I'm fine with that. And I, I just need to make sure I know who the section leads are. So I know Larry, your base, Dave, your lead. Um, Matt, is Matt. Baritone. Well, Matt is baritone. And Mark Torrance is tenor. Okay. I wasn't sure whether it was Mark or still Chuck. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Elliot. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, so Mark's not with us, so he has no report. Uh, John, do you have anything? Yeah. So, uh, so we're on for um, the Mountain View tree lighting. I've provided information to them. The information I've given them is I've given them our our repertoire. You know that we can choose from. I think that they're more interested in what songs we were singing rather than which songs we were singing. You know what were possibilities, and also. Um, I've asked for a 10 to 15 minute performance. We'll see what they come back with, you know? So that's, so that's just, just for your information. We're on for that. And it's, uh, I should give you the date. I forgot the date. Uh, hang on just a minute. I'll give you the date as, as we go on, but that's, that's it. So I'll, I'll just, I'll just look it up and give it to you later. So yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the, the, the total. John, if we put that, in the calendar yet? I have not. So, you know, the, the, the process is, you know, is tell them and see what, what comes back, yeah. you know, from them usually. I hope that they don't say that we're not, you know, that they have too many people, but, you know, we'll, I will keep that under advisement and I'll put it into the, to the calendar. It, or it, it, it looks it. like, it looks like it's in there already. Okay. Um, December 5th. Right. That sounds right. Six, I don't know if the timing's right, but it's, I, yeah, there's a, and we there's don't a placeholder in there. Yeah, okay. we just don't know that. So okay, cool. Okay, good. Um, another one that I you might want to check uh, with Peter. Uh, this is uh, about holiday events. Peter Anderson. Um, last time I chatted with him a couple of weeks back, he was saying that um, the Rotary Club that sponsors the um, tree lighting event in Morgan Hill uh, mm -hmm. is interested in the Peninsulaires being there again this next year. So you might want to check with him because that would be something to coordinate there. And because uh, I know you're, that's like fault that, that's in your bailiwick yeah. these days. So yeah, yeah, he mentioned that to me. So so I will, you know, when he when he gets um, when I see him again, I know that uh, he's been traveling. So okay. and I have no date yet for the San Bruno tree lighting. Um, but I did hear from that coordinator this week who requested um, a video. They, they want to see kind of like a video of what we look and sound like doing holiday stuff. So I've shared that with, with that group. Um, oh, cool. So I'll let you guys know as soon as I know something. What about Paloli, John? We used to do Paloli. Is that the, something we could do? 
We did. Um, I have not checked back with that. That was a, um, a Saturday afternoon, if I remember correctly. Um, I can look and see if they have a program. That's, you know, a lot of those programs have gone away, you know, but uh, I, I will check. It's a good suggestion. I will check it. Thanks, and then, John. And then the other one, John, I'm sure you're, I don't, I don't know who, who the who's are. And you may already have this information, but Al Ward had been the guy who got information about Caltrain for some reason. I don't know why, <laughs> but we don't know anything about Caltrain yet. Yeah, Caltrain, the last time we suggested, uh, you know, anyway, okay, we can do the station. I will check on that too. So and I'll check with Al Ward. So thank you. All right. Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dave Kokerhoff, you're up. I am up. Okay. Uh, I sent out my report earlier in the week. So September was big on uh, preparation for the two big events, the Fresno event in October and the fall show in November, and that's working uh, through all right. Um, I thought it was very interesting, and I mentioned it in the report when we had Chris Aber there on September 8th. It was quite an interesting thing, because I know that through communications, direct communications to the members via email and video that uh, Curtis and Mike C. did, and that I did, it was like starting, you know, multiple weeks ahead of time. Chris is coming. He's going to work with us on the two contest songs. We need to be super ready so that he can help us take it to the next level. And the first run through of the songs <laughs> was really interesting. And we, we got our hand slapped by our coach, as you might recall. So that was a bit disappointing for me. But it was interesting that the guys have risen from that challenge and are um, doing really well. Um, not much else. Um, think rehearsals have been going really well. Uh, the guys seem to be very much into breaking up is hard to do. The November 5th show committee is working diligently. Um, the guys handling the food, which are Jerry and Paul, have got figured out what they're going to do. We do have access to certain things at the Elks Lodge, so that's good. Um, Mark's handling the marketing, though I'm assisting this weekend to get the first message out. Larry's got great ideas for the staging beyond what we're doing in Fresno. Wanless is, John Wanless is handling the hall decorations and that's coming along all right. Um, he's got some really fun thoughts for that. Um, Mike Oliver's wife, Barbara, is handling the sign and auction and she's a rock star because she's already pushing me for coordination stuff. And uh, then Ethan is taking care of the guest quartet and we're planning an afterglow. And the thought about the afterglow was that it would be at the lodge, uh, I think, though El uh, Ethan is looking at other possibilities. I, it's just, it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm also think, I'm, I think it would be better if it's someplace else than the lodge personally, but we'll see how that goes. Um, that's pretty much it on my report. We really have to push on show tickets is the last thing I mentioned in there. And I said this on Thursday, the show script is pretty much done. Timeline is pretty much done. Not giving that out to the guys on purpose because I didn't want to get into the rabbit hole of discussing things about the show when we needed to focus on convention. Um, and that's all I got. Any questions? Uh, not a question, a comment about the the fall show. Um, Jerry is really doing this whole thing uh, single handedly, pretty much. I'm I'm helping a little bit, but he's really <laughs> he's spearheading he's got, that part. He's okay, amazing. He's got so much energy. So anyway, he's <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you, Paul. Great. Thank you, guys. Well, Dave, that's real, all. Dave, real quick, can you give? Uh, a 10 second on why you prefer uh, offsite versus the, the Elks for the afterglow? Because we would have the opportunity for whoever's going, if they want something to eat, they can, they pay for it. If they want something to drink, they pay for it. Otherwise we have to find a way to bring in food and ask for donations. And, and plus, and then 
then we've got extra time at the lodge to have to clean up and lock up and stuff like that. And I just as soon get done, clean up, lock up and leave and not have to worry about bringing in extra food for the okay. purpose of the afterglow. Okay, I got it, thank you. All right, so uh, I hear a motion to uh, accept the reports. Mike Oliver, second. Elliot, Elliot, all in favor, raise your hand. Okay, the reports are accepted. Um, moving in, old business. Actually, uh, Dave Cookahook and I had a talk about the uh, uh, the Barber Shopper of the Quarter Awards, and we decided to just uh, present the the Q two one to Ethan. And so, but I lost my notes from that the last uh, meeting. We had an, a, a, Q, a Q3 nomination. Yes, Do we remember we, and we, we voted on that. It, I, I thought, let Larry go to me, cover your ears, Larry. I think we uh, voted uh, Mr. Valencia in as Barber Shopper of the Quarter for Q3. That's my memory as well. Okay, then, then that's already done. That's already done. I think we should check the report from last month. Paul, do you have last month's minutes available? Um, I have to dig them out just a second. Well, he, yeah, I looked at it and he didn't put the names. He down. didn't. He didn't name names. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I wasn't because I think I might have been nominated, but I think I mentioned somebody else, and that somebody else. Will is who we voted for. It doesn't, I mean, it's important to know. If we didn't vote for Ethan. Yeah, Ethan was barbershopper of the quarter for Q2. Okay. So I just want to make sure we're being fair here. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're fair. And I you believe, deserve it, Larry. I believe it was Larry for Q3. Um, yes, that's my recollection too. And uh, unless was there, you know, Larry, you, I'm happy to be made wrong. So, uh, did you have another thought on that? No, it's like I said. I thought that that when we talked about them at our last meeting, somebody nominated me, but I believe I might have meant, named somebody else. And who did you name? Well, maybe maybe it was between maybe it was for Q two between Ethan and me, yeah. and then maybe I just forgot. Yeah. Um, okay. If we okay, don't have cool. a recording for or a a record of the names from the last meeting, um, one of the reasons might be that that the report goes to the members and we don't want the members to know, um, but somehow we've got to keep track of these. Well, my chart, my my what I was task to do afterwards was create the the um, certificate certificate and so i've got a q3 certificate in the name of larry valencia so i'm happy well, to change it <laughs> no need to change it just <laughs> thank you thank you board okay very cool all right so uh is there anything that we need to add to the convention planning um, the only thing that I would like to suggest, we talked about where to meet, when to meet, what to be ready for. I would request that a message, an email about that go out from our co-directors and not from me. I think it has a little more weight. Uh, so um, that would be the only additional thing on convention. Okay. Yeah, so, we're, we're talking we're talking 9 a.m. in the Double Tree parking lot, right? Yeah. Uh, should we do a, um, a video message? Yeah, sure. probably. Yeah. Um, I I um, I won't have time to get to it till uh, probably tomorrow morning, but I can do it tomorrow morning. Um, and uh, just kind of an FYI for everybody, I have to go at 11:30 today uh, for a funeral, so. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, the, the video message would be cool, but 
I'd like to I'd also like to see an email from our directors with the direction for contact. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's reasonable. I mean, in in general, we don't get involved in the logistics of the stuff. Um so it would be like more like rah rah and stuff. Like the only thing I would say is like nine o'clock, double tree parking lot. Um with a lot in costume. Um so that so that there's no chance of us risking like mix mix cross signals with with the folks who who have the detailed plans right i think the key that it's be there at nine working from nine to ten you have a break from ten to ten thirty when you come back at ten thirty be in uniform that's what we gotta that that's the message in, right? in the warm-up room no we're meeting well the, yeah this, this is why we don't want to have us doing it if you look at the flow line, we're we have access to the warm up room at 1020. No, excuse me, 1040. So my recommendation for what it's worth would be meet back in the parking lot at 1030 and we walk to the warm up room together. That's would be what I would suggest. Uh, but you know, that's just me. How about we meet at the warm up room? at 10 30 that way we're outside the room already instead of walking around in costume all over the place uh as long as everybody knows where it is i mean i there's know a, ethan sent him uh, uh what do you call it uh there's a map a map yeah we're in salon a2 for warm-ups yeah okay. in the hotel in, let's in the hotel. We, don't, we don't have to committee this you and me stick around afterwards we'll figure this out okay good right uh moving on New business, uh, review the output from the strategic planning meeting that Mike held a couple of weeks back. Are you, Mike, do you want to lead this? Sure. Um, I'm almost I'm almost inclined to table this to the next board meeting, but um, let, me, let me give the, the overview. Um, and there were, I don't know, how, how many people here were also at that. Um, Larry, was. Mike, uh, Mark Torrance was there as a board member. Elliot um, was there. Elliot, okay, cool. So you guys can help me fill in the blanks on this stuff. Um, I wanted to put together a presentation, like, like a quick three slide thing. I just didn't get to it. Um, so macro level, um, it was a very good uh, outing and exercise from my perspective. Um, I think from Curtis's as well. Um, the key takeaways were, uh, Elliot, Elliot and Larry, whoever else, talk, talk through this while I, while I bring up my notes here, um, give a sense of like what your perspective was on this event. Well, I mean, it was hard to, it was hard to get away from the, the most contentious part of it, which is, you know, still been, been on my mind, um, uh, which is the the whole issues of of culture and inclusion and so on. Um, and I don't think that I was prepared at the time to to really um, present what I thought about it. And I thought about it a bit a bit afterwards. Um, and I've sort of I've sort of come to the around to the view that. Um, the, that the stuff that I was most worried about um, is that we not be doing something performatively um, and uh, virtue signaling. Um, and I think that that uh, we should we should try to do outreach and make people feel as comfortable as possible, but not by not by doing checklists of you know what was the race of the person who wrote this song yeah um, let, let me let me give some context here because I, I i imagine have no idea what we're talking about um so in the afternoon um there ended up being a very deep conversation about the acknowledgement that we are in one of the most multicultural areas of the u.s but our our membership does not reflect that multiculturalism. Um, and like, how, how, does the, how does that group feel about it? Like, what, what should we think about from a strategic objective perspective and from like, like specific 
objectives to um, basically change, like, like do is, one, is this something that we feel strongly about? Two, what does a smaller group think about the, the needs of that? Um, and that led to some very interesting and very deep and, and very strongly committed opinions about that. Um, now with that context, Mike, go on, go ahead. Yeah, so right, the, the um, I, I feel like I was not, I was not able to really present what I thought about that on, on that Saturday because I hadn't thought about it and I wasn't prepared. Um, and, you know, I think that, that we, we, we should have another discussion about it. Um, I really don't want to do that right now. Um, I've, got a, I've got a meeting at one o'clock with my tax person. And so, so this is like all day meetings practically for Saturday. But, uh, um, but uh, uh, I mean, I think that we need to, we definitely need to keep looking at this and um, figuring out what, you know, what we want to, what we want to do. Um, and my, as I said, my general approach is that, that I feel like there's nothing wrong with presenting our own tradition. We welcome people into it as much as we can, as much as, as much, you know, we, we outreach, we, we make people, we make people feel comfortable. Uh, but I don't think that I don't think that we should be doing sort of a self-conscious still not finding the right words but but I don't want it to be performative I don't want it to be virtue signaling I don't think that we should be making checklists of of what was the race of the person who wrote our various songs so right. I um, uh, uh, it sounds to me like there, I, I wasn't at the meeting, it sounds to me like there's a couple of layers to this. One is, uh, and I could be, I could have misinterpreted this, but one sounds like it's when it comes to getting a more diversity in membership, or how do we do that? And are we comfortable with that? And it seems to me we are, we've got uh, several, you know, a number of Asian Americans, we've got uh, some Indian uh, Americans, uh, not Native Americans, but guys from India um, that are coming on board. Um, we haven't had any um, um, African Americans uh, there to re at rehearsals, so hopefully we get more. So I'm not thinking that that's what we're talking about. I guess I'm guessing that we're talking sure. about the the music that we perform and where does that originate? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, there there is a there is a piece of the membership. Um, but it's also like looking at our audiences and like, you know, in a, in effect, you can, you can look around at our audiences. They're hundred percent white, right? Like, let's, let's be like, like one of the things that we sort of agreed on tacitly was like, let's, let's be, let's, let's be, let's be very honest and, and candid about like where we are. Right. Um, so some of the, some of the ideas that came up were, um, should should we um, actively engage, um, for example, BIPOC churches and say, like we would, like somehow um, we would like to send a quartet out there to just, you know, like do do we want to do like more church things? Do we want to do um, like specific like ethnic? Uh, festivals seek those out as performance opportunities. Um, do we want to um, do like like one of the big things that came up was do we want to host a show that highlights a variety of um, cultures and performances? Um, yeah, you know, like the uh, you know, like uh, um, could that like you know something with the uh, with the Oakland Gospel Chorus or you know, like some some sort of like deliberate programming to highlight other um, of, of which we are a part versus okay. Like, okay. Like the driving so, okay. okay. So if I can if I can just say because I may have left a, a, a an inaccurate impression, I'm actually okay with all three of those ideas. I think all three of those ideas are good ones. Uh, of course, the 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 question is. 
The question is, you know, whether we would be welcome in those churches and so on, and that I don't know. So I, there, there's, a, I'm going to try to separate the concepts here. It seems to me when we talk about how do we we as a performing organization uh, want to reach out to the community and and enable those individuals who are unfamiliar with our genre to experience our genre then wherever we can go to do that would be wonderful because it's going to resonate with someone maybe only one person and then they come and they say hey i want to come to your shows or i want to become a member and that's fantastic and so we've we've helped people understand that there is this genre of music and wherever we can go to do that is great as far as what do we want to think about in terms of the music that we perform i think that we have to think about the music we perform in terms of generational resonance because the people that are going to be part of the society in the next 5 10 15 20 years you know are not guys like you know me and and who are in, that are in their 70s right it's going to be the people in their 30s 40s and 50s and they grew up with different music than we grew up with. And so we have to be thinking about what kind of material is going to resonate with, with that generation. And so that's where I'm understanding this conversation to have gone, but I could be wrong about that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that was necessarily about generational stuff, though that did come up. Um, I would point out there that, that none of us are really old enough to have grown up with the actual with, with polecats for example right uh and and that the uh, uh i think that uh, i think that some of the some of the older music that none of us are old enough to have grown up with is is still a valuable part of our our repertoire and 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 that 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 uh uh, that element can can resonate with young people as well as it can with us. We're on the same we're on the same boat there. Yeah, I don't. I, I think like like the repertoire question. I mean, like there's there's a lot of landmines in the in the old songs, um, but like that's something that Curtis and I are very very strongly about. I think the the important thing is, um, Dave. I think your point about culture, like like um genera generational resonance. Um, and audience appreciation is going to inform 80 to 90 percent of our our decisions um, that like at the end of the day you know crazy little thing um, one of the one of the things that like like so so the key takeaway is like even so at that at that call there were I don't know, 10, 11 people there. There was there was there was one person, Shiv, um, that was that was a BIPOC, right? So yay, like like represent representation and like getting opinions. There were two younger guys at this call. That's a good thing, right? Um, the uh, the 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 core takeaways was that there is a strong, uh, I believe, a strong belief among the people there that we should be seeking out opportunities and performances that are more that that expose us and our product to a broader group of cultures if you will yeah absolutely um, yeah that, that's, that's the key takeaway so like just being <laughs> being deliberate at it and like actually like not just accepting the status quo but actively seeking out or programming additional like like performances that that um embrace the multiculturalism of the bay area all right so i'm going to speak to that real quickly and then we can move on but we have an opportunity that came from last saturday a woman who's a pastor at a local uh church came up to us and says hey we do this thing every year in the spring blah 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 blah. we think you guys would be great and they've got a uh their church it is more of a gospel it you know tie and then they've got some other groups that they bring in from different 
So there again, it's perfect. And that's the, exactly the kind of thing that makes sense to me for us to do. And then the other thing I'll mention is a couple of years ago, um, before, well, it's probably five or six years ago now, it was, was it before, John, I don't remember if it was when we did this with Vocal Capital or if it was my previous uh, iteration, but the company I was working for had an event that was a technology event where 97% uh, of the people that were there were Chinese, okay? And we got up and we sang about 20 minutes worth of barbershop songs and the looks on these people's faces were like, what the hell is going on here? But it was an absolute blast. We had a wonderful time and uh, we got paid for it. So that was a good thing. So, so absolutely finding opportunities to get out there and uh, in any environment and, and perform and expose our genre is a good thing. Elliot? Yeah, I, I agree with all of that, but I think the key to this is are becoming more diverse, really. And I think if we are more diverse, our audiences will be more diverse. The opportunities, like the connections and places to perform, I see it coming from there. And to the extent that we can affect our di diversity, I think that maybe when we do outreach, you know, things like going to high schools and churches and things like that, I think we can make choices that that actually favor diversity. Can can you give an example? Um, yeah, like if we're gonna let's say reach out to like high schools, we can do that, we can do that in more diverse neighborhoods. Um, as well, an example. As far as our membership goes, I think we're moving in that direction. You know, I'm real excited. We, we so, are. I mean, we've got, and that that's really cool. Um, and then, um, then that gives us opportunities because those people are connected to other possibilities, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, that's how we got to go to the farm because we had uh, Dave and, and Mark, Mark Wilson and, and Dave, um, um, whatever, Dave, whatever Dave's last name is. Um, so, so that was really cool. Um, and, and that, and then we got Wilson coming in from there, you know, so, so these things are, 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 are evolving. I, think I agree, but they we're, take, we're, we're moving in that direction. I yeah. think it's a question of recognizing that that's where we want to go. And it's not the sort of thing that is necessarily going to happen, um, you know, like to on, on the 9th of October, 2022, but we're moving in that direction. And now we are getting opportunities and requests to perform in venues that we haven't had an opportunity to perform in before because we've been out there at activities like farmer's market. So, so this stuff is evolving for us. And, and that's having that conscious intent gives us the opportunity to open our perception to things that we didn't realize were there in front of us because we weren't looking at it from that perspective. That's just right. my humble yeah, opinion. Yeah, I, I, think, I think one of the big differences here is it has been happening organically or accidentally. Um, yeah. I think there's, there's a desire for more deliberate direction. Well, sure. Um, that's, so, uh, and, and Dana, and I know we're aware of time. Um, right. So like that, that was like, that was a very, intentional conversation it kind of came up organically but like all of a sudden we were deep into it and that was almost an hour of that that saturday um the other big thing that came up was um the like looking for um the education theme and what do we really hang our hat on we talked a lot about real men sing we talked about a lot about supporting the the education programs um, and that evolved into we this this group um, thought that a a peninsulars um, driven educational weekend would be a very 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 good exercise for us to do. Um, a lot of discussion about like what that might look like and and how that might be structured. But like, let me let me paint a picture as an idea. So imagine Real Men Sing comes in on Friday Friday morning like it normally does. 
Um, we support that event. We've got, you know, like there, there are hundreds of 400 high school boys that, that kind of kick off that weekend. Um, imagine that Harmony, um, Harmony Foundation sends out a top level quartet for that weekend um, because the AIF, um, AIC and Harmony Foundation are doing grants for, for that type of event. Um, that weekend becomes a co-branded Sweet Ads and Barbershop Harmony College West um, with a pinnacle performance Saturday night. Um, and like driving explicit programming for like, like a program track for musical educators, uh, a programming track for the individual contributors, um, music educators slash directors, perhaps, you know, something like that. Um, that, that sort of thinking, that sort of event um, had checked a lot of boxes across what our, what, what like the strategic objectives that came up were, um, as well as um, really putting the face on us as like regional leaders in terms of like ours, our strength and what, and our objectives from an education perspective. Um, that, uh, I mean, Elliot, Mike, is there anything you want to add to that? Um, um, well, no, that, that's, uh, that's true. That's the, the Harmony College West thing. I remember being really excited about that on Saturday. And, and uh, unfortunately, I've had this, my, my whole inner dialogue about about that day has has boiled down to the other thing um but i think that's a i think that's a fantastic idea that that we should definitely explore mike so uh guys at this point uh i wanted to get a feeling from mike c and curtis do you want to um, schedule another time to discuss this in the future I, I think I think that's I think that's appropriate. Um, I mean, we did we did lay out like some of the pinnacle events and like performance ideas that we thought through twenty three and twenty four. Um, I think it is um, very appropriate to talk. Uh, yeah, you know, like to basically take this input. Um, you know, basically going into twenty three planning. Um, something that did come up was we should do twenty three planning before twenty twenty three. So uh, you know, like probably a, like a, a segment on on the November board meeting is is very appropriate. Okay, well why don't we do that? I'll I'll put that in the agenda. Okay, um, let's see. I think that's uh, oh, yeah, sorry, Dana, one more one more thing that just came up because it is time critical. Um, the uh, there was a lot of uh, strong opinion around uh, making the singing Valentines more impactful. Um, getting everybody out and delivering singing Valentines, even if they don't, even if they aren't paid um, to city halls, to high school um, secretaries, you know, like whatever we can do um, to use, to, to really double down on the singing Valentines to drive um, like as a marketing and branding event, as well as just like, hey, we'll sing if you pay us. Okay. So how do we? Uh, that's a that's a com that? that's a conversation uh, for probably November December when we're talking about planning for Valentine's twenty twenty three and how we go about doing that. You know, the key thing in this is I, I I don't know how other quartets have done this, but when my quartet goes out and does singing Valentine's, if there's an opportunity to sing for somebody else while we're out there, we do it. Okay. Um, so, uh, it's, it, it, you know, the, the, the primary objective is as a revenue opportunity for the chapter. And then the, um, uh, the secondary is to, well, I, yeah, the secondary is to, to bring joy to the person who was receiving the Valentine. And then the tertiary is to bring joy to everybody else that's around there. Sometimes we've sung extra songs just for the for the group that was listening for who was receiving the Valentine. So I think Mike see the the general consensus of the guys who go out to do that is along the lines of what you're talking about, but it may not be top of mind in that if we we make that a uh, uh, an objective 
you know, we were singing one time somewhere and we came across a couple that was just getting their marriage certificate at uh, City Hall. So we sang to them, you know, I mean, these things, it's just right, great. Right. Right, and I, I think I think it kind of came across as like more intentional um, that we like the singing Valentines are a pinnacle event um, and bringing that that marketing and branding and visibility up to the top level. So like your example of like, hey, let's go to City Hall and sing for the marriage uh, for the marriage license place, right? You know, like something like like deliberate choices like that versus accidentally or. Um, organically kind of stumbling into opportunities. Let's actually program some opportunities um, to, to, sure. to increase the awareness. Yeah, sure. there, was, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of discussion about intention versus accident um, and just being very, very deliberate to maximize the impact of these high effort events that we put into. Right, okay. okay great, thanks guys. Let's wrap this up. Uh, and before uh, Curtis has to go, maybe we can, Oh, Elliot? Yeah, I'm just uh, wondering about voting in any candidates. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah that's on the that's agenda. And I'm still, I'm not sure what, what the thought is. Mark's not here. He's the section lead. Uh, but for Bruce, um, I know uh, Mike was ready to, you know, make him a member and have him participate. As it turns out, he will be out of town. He can't. But he's definitely interested in membership. So, I mean, there's time. He wants to be in the show. That could wait till the next board meeting. We could do an audition. It's, it's, it's okay. I think he had, didn't he audition on Thursday? No. Yep. No. Yeah, yes. Was, Bruce did. a strong audition. Oh, oh, Bruce did audition? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah Curtis Nice sang with him, right? Yeah. Oh, and, okay. and, and Mark Torrance, too, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Was standing yeah, he there sang Hello, Mary Lou. I heard you. So, yeah. so that, you know, if you want to vote, if you want to vote on him, I mean. So, yeah, Bruce, Bruce excuse me, I, I'm, I'm going to interfere right now. Curtis has to leave in a couple minutes. We can, he can't vote on this question okay. anyway. Curtis, did you have any director comments you want to put out before you Thank have you. to leave in a couple minutes? Thank you, Dave. Appreciate that, guys. Uh, thanks for uh, that. Um, uh, just uh, there's been um, the the last month has just been really um, incredible to watch the chorus um, grow stronger and stronger. Um, uh, Dave and I were talking a little bit earlier. You know, um, uh, there we there were some concerns at the beginning of September about uh, being prepared for. Um, our October uh, uh, contest festival appearance, and um, we we did put our we we did put our foot in our mouth a little bit the night Chris was there, um, but um, since that point the guys have kicked it up, and it really has been showing um, every week. Um, there's just been tremendous growth, tremendous growth as we get ourselves prepared for. Uh, next weekend, and then of course um, that leads immediately into the show preparation following that as well. Um, I'm really excited about the upcoming performance down in Fresno. Um, Thursday night's rehearsal um, was excellent. I, I walked away from Thursday night's rehearsal feeling like there was so much that was accomplished um, musically, performance-wise, um, and uh, I've just really been impressed with um, how far we have come in a month um, with the uh, uh, with everything. So I'm looking forward to this coming week, uh, gentlemen, and uh, very excited about everything that's upcoming. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you, Curtis. And uh, now Harry has to leave too, so why don't we switch to? To the vote. Good of the chapter for Harry. So, uh, well, we Harry. need to get Harry involved in the vote. All right. <laughs> so let's uh, let's do that first. Do, I, do, I, do I hear a motion? Yeah. So, so we do one one candidate at a time. Or okay. What do you got? Okay. So I move that we make Liam a member. Second. Discussion. Discussion. I think he's a good guy. I mean, a lot, he's he's a hard worker. I think it's going to be a really good addition to the to the base section. That's me. 
just a little bit of background. Um, Liam's um, back last summer when VIH was uh, still in, in existence, Liam was coming um, to VIH rehearsals, uh, showing an interest in barbershop um, even before he moved in the area. And he, he told, he talked with us about that. And then once VIH folded, he contact, he contacted us cause he moved into the area and I told him to come over to Peninsulares and he did. So here's a young man who's got a real interest in acapella and, and singing. Beautiful. Great. Thank you. All right. So, uh, we had a second Liam? discussion. Oh. Pardon me, Paul. Which one's Liam? I, I, I should. Well, we, we'll we'll deal with that. Sure we'll deal. With, we only have three minutes, and then he, okay. Harry has to go. Yeah. So, uh, are you sure ready for a vote? All in favor of accepting Liam into our chorus? Unanimous. All right. And Harry. Uh, no, Elliot's got another one. Yeah, Bruce oh. Poland. Ah, sorry. He's the tenor that uh, was showed up and he's the one that Mike C was talking about that he sang with another chorus. I don't remember which one, but he's been around and he, and he knows his stuff. Is he the the uh, guy with fairly long hair, not quite as long as mine? No, no, no. no. short, gray. No. He, he's the one next, he was in the center next to Mark. He's the guy that took the pictures of us. The guy that took the yes. pictures of us. Oh, and has a sweet tenor voice. Yeah. How long, I move. How long has he been coming? A second. What's that, Discussion? Paul? How long has he been coming? Has he been three weeks or? No, he's been two weeks. <laughs> well, so okay. Let's. We're we're ready. I yes. think. Are, we're ready to vote. Who was yes. the, who was the second? Larry, Larry seconded. All right. All in favor, raise your hand. All right. Liam is now with us. Great. Uh, Bruce. Okay. And Bruce. Liam and Bruce, Bruce. Pardon me. And Liam. All right, Harry. Over to you, buddy. Okay. So, <laughs> well, once again, I'm sorry, but I'm going to be disappearing for a while because I've got a, a trip later this month and a short trip, and then I'll be gone from. November 3rd to the 18th, I'll be out of town, out of the country. So um, I'm looking forward to those things personally, but it, I know it comes as an awkward time and I'm missing a lot of uh, major stuff that, that's going on at the chorus, but um, I'm um, looking forward to what I'm doing personally. I'm also looking forward to when I'm back in late November uh, of being back on the risers and participating fully with the chorus and uh, best of luck to everybody on the convention and on the um, show. Bon viaggio. Thanks. Thanks, Harry. We'll miss you. But you can't travel anymore during contests. <laughs> you used up your one free pass. Okay. Uh, uh, Mike C, do you want to do any more comments? Uh, but it's a chapter. Yeah, um, I was really, really pleased at the outcome of the uh, 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 last Saturday. Um, you know, like seeing seeing some new blood with both Nick and Shiv being there. Um, they both brought really strong um, opinions and passion to the group, um, which I which I absolutely loved. Um, and I think it I think it was a very effective outing. Um, I wanted to talk just a little bit about. Um, like how we're how we're going into convention, um, we are daring greatly at convention, um, and uh, that is I think really good for the muscles for the organization. Um, I think I think Curtis and I are so delighted to that like in rising to the challenge and accepting the challenge um, in terms of the timeline for these songs um, and. At the end of the day, I am so proud of us that we have um, that we have kind of stepped up to that challenge and and um, you know are going to put are, are going to put our product out, out into the world um, next Saturday. So delighted about that. Um, I do think uh, that some of some of the the new blood is challenging some of the old thinking, um, and I, I look forward to 
um, that that tension and excitement and and bringing these new voices into the into the party with Ethan um, and Nick being on the board next year. So um, I feel like we're in a positive direction, um, and I'm excited to see the evolution. That's what I got. Thank you, Mike. John. Yeah, I'm kind of excited. Lots of singing, lots of, of uh, opportunity over the next couple of months to to do some good stuff. So that's that's about it. Thank you, John. Yep. Dave Coker. Um, I have a lot of attention on the November fifth event, and my biggest focus of attention regarding that is getting people to come to the show, selling tickets. We really need, if, in order to make this uh, an event that is um, financially successful for us and uh, emotionally successful for us as performers, um, we, we would have ideally no fewer than 80 and as many as 100 people at each performance. So that's a hell of a lot of tickets to sell. Now we've done stuff like this in the past where a, a, a cabaret or a fall event had close to 100 people at each show. We've done it before. Um, we haven't done it in the past, pro well, well, taking COVID away from it in the past probably three or four times years that we've done this we haven't reached that level of um, um audience you know and, and i'm we, but we need to do that we need and we need to do that this year because we're putting so much effort into this thing and it's such a good sh show um that we've got to take advantage of it and i think we've got to get the guys to realize that and to do whatever we, is possible to sell tickets we got to get we, we got to fill the house both times and then we'll be really feeling good about ourselves. That's mine. So I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And I think we ought to, just speaking to that, I think we ought to give the guys goals for each performance, say, for example, five minimum for the ice cream and five for the dinner. Just set it out there that everybody be responsible for a minimum number of tickets. That would be ideal. Yeah. I think we ought to really uh, get a flyer out of ASAP. I mean, <laughs> that's the, the flyer thing. exists. Yeah. Uh, it's in my inbox, Paul. I think I mentioned that earlier today that I just received it and I'm going to be sending it out. Didn't I say that earlier? Yes. I, I, okay. I might have missed it. Okay. Paul, you're up next. Well, um, see, this, uh, this show is really spectacular. I, I've been to a lot of shows, and um, the 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 uh, decoration, the boat is amazing, and 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 uh, uh, well, I'm looking forward to it, and uh, uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. So, uh, and uh, as far as the membership, uh, I mean. Uh, it feels like a lot of people. I mean, we're 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 uh, compared to where we were before. I mean, uh, even with the small, the lower attendance, it's been really it's been really great. So that's all. Thanks, Paul. Elliot. Uh, yeah. So um, actually, two thoughts, but they're related. Uh, one is to pick up on what Curtis said. I and I was going to say this. I I, I was just impressed with how quickly the chorus was able to bring these two tunes uh, that we're taking to convention to <clears throat> the level of excellence I think we're um, getting close to or you know achieving. <clears throat> I think that happened really quickly and I, I, I think this is less time than I, I don't know, in my few years with the chorus, it's taken uh, for us to like really do something with with new tunes. So that that's one observation. And it also ties into the other thing, which um, was uh, something I was going to say about last Saturday. 
uh, uh, at Mike's. Um, one thing that struck me was we we have the value of inclusion, right? We don't we're not like Fog City where you have to pass some audition to sing with us. We want to grow the chorus, and that kind of works with it. At the same time, we we have a strong value of performance and also excellence. So how do you combine how do you combine these? We're letting anyone in, yet we want to be we want to be top, um, not necessarily from a competition standpoint, but in terms of excellence and performance. And the way you do that is education. So to me, the idea of blending education into our culture, whether we do it through outside events or handle it internally with clinics or whatever we're doing, um, I think is an important component of um, moving us in the direction we wanna go. Thank you, Elliot. Mike, Oliver. Yeah, so first of all, I have to say that I'm just uh, enchanted by Larry's bird there. That's uh, very sweet. Um, and I, I don't wanna think about that too much so I don't have to stop eating chicken. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a chicken. No, he eats not. chicken, Mike. <laughs> he <laughs> eats chicken. Um, but uh, yeah, I am so looking forward to Fresno. I'm, I'm have been not thinking so much about November fifth, just because you know there's the the first uh, the first thing to do, and then we'll do the second thing. A um, little bit nervous about trying to sell tickets. I'm a terrible salesman. I just can't can't talk anybody into anything. Uh, but. Uh, but it's an exciting time. Thanks, Mike. Larry. Yeah, he eats chicken. Um, <laughs> I am, I am, I have been and continue to be so excited about what's happening next, uh, next weekend. It's been a, uh, this is like getting, kind of getting back to normal, right? Uh, convention with lots of quartets, a good number of choruses. Um, I'm just looking forward to uh, getting it out there and uh, giving it all I got, and then hearing what the uh, what the audience thinks of us, and then of course evaluations and all the other fun related to the, around convention. Lovely downtown Fresno. So yeah, see you Tuesday, and uh, yeah, let's keep it going. This is good stuff. Thank you, Larry. Well, I'd like to start out by really saying how much I appreciate um, Mike and Curtis, our co-directors. They brought a level of energy and uh, professionalism uh, to our chorus that's just amazing. And I'm just so thankful for, for them being part of our team. And also the response that the chorus has had to, to them they're directing and the improvements that I'm hearing, that everybody's uh, noticing, it's just phenomenal. And I'm so thankful. I'm also thankful for, for you guys on the board that made this uh, all happen and uh, supporting our chorus. So uh, thanks all around and excited about the convention coming up and our show on the 5th of November. Very cool. All right. So hey, with Paul, that, go Paul, ahead. Fru Paul Frudenthal, you were going to send me a couple of photographs. I did. You did? Yeah. Didn't you didn't get them? I sent them uh, last night. Oh. Oh. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All, all right. I think we're done. So I call this meeting adjourned. Ta da. Right. Um, Mike Kading, did you want to stick around for a couple of minutes? Uh, Dana, yep. could you give me um, a hosting privilege, please? Yeah, hold on. Let's see. Following discussion is about what? Uh, how to word the um, 